claim they're also thinking about enforcement. We're going to have to look far to see that uh, putting together rules and protocols aren't always followed and finding a way to, you know, to civilly uh, demand and enforce the regulations that you put in place also needs to be part of the plan. A part of your plan. Yeah, that's a very good point. Thank you. We'll make sure we include that. I, I have to confess, I, that could have been a blind spot for me, but you're right. Thank you. Yeah, if I, if I might add National Park Service is struggling with exactly that issue. Um, the reality is that under at least as the phase two requirements, there's a significant um, there's a significant emphasis on keeping people spread out from each other. And when you're talking about hovering around an exhibit or looking at something new, I think that's one of the challenges that that we look at, even in the places that we've already had open for decades, you know, New York Town Visitor Center. Jamestown Island Visitor Center. Um, this is a brand new location, and the first thing people are going to do are huddle up to read everything, right? Uh, it is almost impossible to keep them from being near each other. And I, I, I personally, I don't, I don't know the answer at this point, but I personally have concerns about what will happen between visitors themselves when one person is standing there reading and someone gets in their personal space as a result. How will that be handled? I don't know that there's an enforcement action we can take that that begins to monitor the level of specificity of contact and, and proximity between visitors. Um, if you look at the current requirements, guided tours have to be nine people or less based on the governor's requirement of no more than 10 to include your guide. So motor coaches are not feasible does kinds of groupings. And this is why that, you know, while it may appear to the public that the Park Service is hanging out at home working on our computer, the reality is we haven't found a way to meet any of the requirements for those different parameters. And I'm not saying I disagree with the parameters. I'm saying our reality, our ability to enforce, we have taken a posture within our organization that we strongly recommend, we strongly encourage, we educate heavily. And then it's upon each, each visitor and each participant to determine how they're going to behave within each other. It's a really difficult position to be in. I feel a personal responsibility for each visitor that would come and, and enjoy our parks. At the same time, we've also seen how it can go very wrong when, when a third party or a second party starts to insert themselves into that behavior pattern. And there are different beliefs and values around virus and mitigation and safety protocols. Um, and I think that's why, you know, Glenn and I keep talking and um, I, I don't, I don't want to be in a situation where we're encouraging people to conflict. That's exactly what we don't want to be. So trying to figure out how we get there and make this wonderful space available without creating a scenario where, you know, people are too near each other and everybody's starting to get anxious and, and, and difficult with each other. So we, we appreciate your patience as we try to figure out each of those steps. We're doing the exact same thing up in Williamsburg. I do know that several of this, in the Hampton Roads region, all the city managers talk on a, on a pretty routine basis, at least twice a week usually, about various challenges. And we've been talking increasingly about museums and visitor spaces and things of that nature. And what, what many localities are contemplating is an appointment system uh, to allow people to, in that way, to control the number of visitors and what time they come in. The challenge of that, of course, is, especially if you're opening a new facility, uh, so many people wanting to get in and then being frustrated with the appointment system. So it may work for a more established um, venue with, say, the Virginia Beach Aquarium as an example, versus a brand new thing where there's a pent up interest and demand. So I just want to now acknowledge that cities are also struggling with these questions. We all want to make facilities available to people as quickly as possible and in accordance with proper CDC and governor requirements. Uh, but there's a, a, a push and a tug at the same time. Absolutely. Uh, totally agree. Thank you for that acknowledgement. It really is a challenge, and we want to offer the best visitor experience. We want to be supportive of FMA's effort to open, and some of these very difficult questions don't have answers to them yet. Any other thoughts? If not, 